When traveling up the long gravel driveway to the front door, you are initially overtaken by the size of the house, then overwhelmed by an odd contradiction of emotion. On one hand, the house completely lives up to the pictures you have seen online and you are excited to get inside. Then, you're a little creeped out by its size and age. As the sun sets, you think, I'm not sure I would want to be left alone in there all night. If it's not haunted, it sure looks like it. Built in 1856, the Prospect Place house is a 29-room brick mansion that shows off the amazing craftsmanship of its time. Though currently in the process of restoration to save what is left of this nearly 200-year-old structure, once inside, you can view what was probably at one time a magnificent place to live. Tall ceilings and wide hallways give the impression of a large home, but it's actually relatively modest in size. G.W. Adams built the house for his second wife and six children. Located in Trinway, Ohio, the house would eventually become a stop on the Underground Railroad through the 1850s and 1860s. On a side note, the people who run Prospect House were really great to work with. They were honest about the things they have seen and heard there, and not at all interested in sensationalizing stories for the sake of hyping interest. We at Other Side Ghost Hunters are really interested in the paranormal, but we want to be able to document things that it we truly see or hear. Not all things that go bump in the night are the dead trying to make contact. What was your first impression when you arrived here? Well, pulling up, it's, it's actually incredible. It's huge. The ceilings are 16 feet tall. It's just ornate in every way. Um, uh, the house is massive and the architecture is really nice. Um, I don't know if I necessarily felt anything, you know, spiritual um it's extremely large to a certain extent and um it's very quiet so we're way out in the country so well i'll be honest with you coming around the corner and seeing this house from the road was it just it blew me away i mean so early in the night there wasn't a whole lot going on and so what i decided to do and what i have done in the past is I grabbed me a voice recorder and I headed to the other side of the house by myself in this case specifically to the quarantine room which the way you get to the quarantine room is you walk through a hallway you go out a door into a basically a porch area and then you go into another door and you end up in the quarantine room and so I started the um, EVP session and shortly after I started I heard footsteps and I just instinctively thought it was the other guys um, although they were on the other side of the house um, and then I in two more occasions I ended up um, hearing some rustling and some other footsteps and so on the voice recorder you can hear me state each time yeah I hear something but I think it's the other guys I think that was People moving around. I am hearing all kinds of stuff. I'm assuming it's them moving around. I heard some more footsteps, but I think it's the other group. So what we did after I got done with the, the voice recorder session is I tell the guys about this and we go back and try to reproduce the sounds um, with them making noise in the area of the house that they're in. And honestly, after multiple, multiple times, we were never able to reproduce the noises that I heard in that room at that time. So we did a full sweep of the house from the basement to the third floor with the K2 meter to see if there was any type of, you know, movement within the lighting and it did not budge. It literally did not move. 
through the entire sweep of every wall. And then later, when we did an EVP session in uh, Mr. Adams' room, was the first time we had actually seen the K2 meter go off after we asked a question, could you go near the K2 meter and cause the lights to move? We unfortunately didn't get on camera, but that was the first time in the entire night that that K2 meter lights had actually moved off of the green onto the other spectrum. So me, Tony, and Jerry were in the library and we had both the doors closed, the windows closed, and we were obviously doing an EVP session. Does anybody here with us walk near that little green light? And you'll note that we didn't actually hear these voices that were coming across on the recorder that we captured. Um, but um, after listening, we obviously did hear these things. Over here is a little red blinking light. You can talk into that. Would you like to tell us your name? And to verify, we also went back and looked and noticed that Jake and Eli, who were also in the house with us, were actually on the second floor, but at the opposite end. So we were at the very front of the house. They were at the very back and on a separate floor. And so the concern was there was bleed through of uh, voices of them talking, but that was not the case after we uh, reviewed the footage. So as we were investigating the sun room, we had multiple experiences. We had heard some voices, some rustling. We were, one of us was even sitting on a chest and at, shortly after that person had gotten up, the chest actually shifted and moved a little bit and we could never figure out exactly why. Um, while, also while we were investigating, we were doing an EVP session and although we didn't hear it at the time, Later on, we had found this very, very distinct breath. Essentially, it was a sigh. If anyone is here, can you give us a sigh? And it showed up very well on the, um, on the voice recorder. So it was uh, some pretty good evidence um, for the night, without a doubt. So once we all got to the mansion, the lady there, Carrie, she gave us a tour of the entire house. She told us where some hot spots are for paranormal, paranormal activity. And she also told us some ways to maybe promote some more paranormal activity. And so what she told us to do specifically in the ballroom, which is on the third floor of the mansion, she told us to play some ballroom music um, some older ballroom music and in and, and hopes that maybe uh, some it would promote some paranormal activity and I guess with other groups it had actually done just that um, so we get up there we uh, turn some music on on one of the phones and we set our cameras up and um, and we start an EVP session and um, and honestly, if you just watch the video, you, it'll speak for itself. It was quite an entertaining moment in our paranormal adventures. And um, so hopefully you like what you see.
across the ceiling. It like, might be like just then. No, it was like right above the camera. Right there. Oh, you see it? Yeah, I just seen it. Yeah, I did too. Yeah, see Are it. we catching headlights from a car? Is uh, there any way? No, because the headlights no. would have to be coming up the driveway. No, there's something. Yeah, I seen it. I seen it too. Is there like a bat in here? That there. What was that? There's... There is a bat. There's something. There's a hundred percent like a bat or something. In here. Oh, oh shit! shit. <laughs> <laughs> Get out if we're going. Come on. Oh, God. Wait. Is he back? Is he 